this is going to be another question and answer video and we have here a really tough question when somebody gives a question like this it makes me think that these people are studying the bible because not many people will, will ask this question but the question is where are tribulation saints judged and what will they get when they are judged what will they be rewarded with Okay, the quick answer is, I believe they are judged at the Great White Throne Judgment, which takes place after the Millennium, or they are judged right before the Millennium. Let's look at that first option first. Why is it possible that they're judged at the Great White Throne Judgment? The common belief by most people is that only lost people are judged at the Great White Throne. They say it's just the loss from all ages, which it is the loss from all ages. But I'm just going to show you why I believe it could also be the saints, some saints judged there. Not us, not church age saints, but saints from other ages. In Revelation 20 and verse 12, it's talking about the great white throne judgment in Revelation chapter 20 there. And it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So you see that there, there is a book of life at the great white throne judgment. And it says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So if there isn't some saints there who are actually in the book of life, then why is the book of life even opened? Why is it there? I don't believe they will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Tribulation saints won't be judged at the judgment seat of Christ as it takes place while the tribulation is actually taking place on earth. So I don't believe it will be there. Now turn to Revelation 11. It says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So this verse takes us all the way to the beginning of the millennium. And then in the very next two verses, look what happens. It says, And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. Now notice verse 17 takes us beyond the millennium. And the 24 elders are looking back, seeing where he hast reigned. That's past tense. So in verse 15, we're seeing the beginning of the millennium. At the end of verse 17, you're seeing the end of the millennium. And then you see in verse 18... You're at the end of the millennium where the nations that are deceived by Satan are angry and they are devoured by fire according to Revelation 20. But also we see something about the great white throne judgment in Revelation 11:18. It says, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and should us destroy them, which destroy the earth. So, if this looks like the great white throne judgment. And if it is, there you have rewards unto thy servants, the prophets. You have the saints and those that fear his name, small and great. So, you have saints there and people being rewarded at the great white throne. And the reason I believe that's the great white throne is because verse 17 said, the 24 elders said that he past reigned, showing you that it's past tense, that he's already reigned, and it took you forward in time to the great white throne. Now, the next question is, what are they rewarded with? And this is a tough question. I don't know for certain what all rewards they will get at the great white throne. However, it seems similar to what we would get at the judgment seat of Christ. 
But before I get completely into that, let's look at the next option. So they are, they, it's possible that they're judged at the great white throne, and I don't rule that option out. But another option is that they are judged right before the millennium. At the end of the tribulation, right before the millennium. And I'm going to show you why I believe that is an option. In Revelation 3.21, it says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Then if you turn all the way to Revelation 20 in verse 4, it says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So these are people who overcame during the tribulation. They were beheaded for Jesus, for the word of God. They hadn't worshipped the beast in his image or received the mark, and they are rewarded with living and reigning with Christ a thousand years. Now, did they already get judged before the millennium? And it was decided how much rain they would get and things like that? That's a possibility. Now also remember that the seven churches in Revelation are doctrinally seven churches in the tribulation. And it says so the it says in Revelation 2 7, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So the first thing we see they are rewarded with is access to the tree of life in eternity. Now, me and you, we don't need access to a tree of life. We got our eternal life from the Lord Jesus Christ. But in Revelation 22 and verse 2, you read about people who are going to get access to a tree of life for healing. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So they get access to the tree of life. That's one thing that they're rewarded with. Next, a crown of life. Revelation 2.10 Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So they have, have the option of getting this crown of life. And we can also get this crown. In James 1.12, it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Revelation 2.17, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and give him a white stone, and then the stone, a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Now that hidden manna, that's possibly food supply given during the great tribulation to those who overcome, to those who can't buy or sell. Similar to how he did it in Exodus where it rained down from the sky. And then the white stone, that could have to do with the stones in a crown. If you look back at Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 16, it says, And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people. For they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an incense upon his land. And that's just speculation, which a lot of this is, because I don't feel like I know this for certain. I don't feel like anybody really knows the answer to this, this question for certain, even though they seem pretty certain. <clears throat> but on questions like this, I just have a hard time uh, just saying I'm 100% sure. And I just have a hard time going with what everybody else says on it, because I don't feel like anybody's really showed me enough proof a hundred percent that I could say either way. So a lot of this is speculation. And there's nothing wrong with speculating on things like this. Because, you know, it doesn't have as much to do with us as it will these people in the future. You know, it's not a salvation issue. It's not a fundamental to the faith when you think the tribulation saints are judged. And these questions are good. These are very good questions because this helps us dig in our Bible. This helps us study the Bible. But these stones here, we also get uh, stones at the judgment seat of Christ. 1 Corinthians 3.12 talks about precious stones. 
that you are building with if you're living a victorious Christian life. You're building with precious stones along with gold and silver. So the tribulation saint could possibly be earning stones for a crown as he will be reigning as a king with Jesus Christ in the millennium and in eternity. But next we see that they're going to have power over the nations. Revelation 2.26 And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. In the millennium, this, see, this is in the millennium and eternity. Next, their name is kept in the book of life. In Revelation 3, 5, it says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. So at the great white throne, when God opens the book of life, their name will be there because they overcame. So that's why the book of life is there. Because you're going to have some people there that's names are in the book of life. So for you and me, we overcame when we believed on Jesus Christ. In 1 John 5, 4 and 5, it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So there's no possibility of our name being removed. But next, what else? Are they rewarded with the tribulation saint? The name of God and New Jerusalem written on them. In Revelation 3.12, it says, he, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So just like we don't completely understand the judgment seat of Christ, we don't have all the answers yet for the tribulation saints and their judgment. But it seems like a big possibility to me that they are judged at the end of the tribulation and the millennial saints are judged at the great white throne. That's a big possibility for me. And since I haven't heard anyone teach that exact uh, explanation before I don't teach that as an absolute doctrinal fact it's just my take on it I'm open to correction now the average Bible teacher won't even approach the question they won't even tell you where tribulation saints are judged most Bible believers though have have the tribulation saints being judged at the great white throne and that's probably right and I certainly don't rule that option out and that is what I believe for most of my saved life but a uh, for a while, I've, I've entertained the thought that they could be judged right before entering the millennium because of Revelation 20 and verse 4, where it says, And I saw thrones, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped at the beast, neither his image, neither had received the mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And you'll notice that in the seven churches... A lot of the rewards have to do with them getting power over the nations, them ruling and reigning. So it seems like it's a possibility that they could be judged right before going into the millennium and they're judged on how much rain they're going to get, similar to how that's what we're going to be judged on at the judgment seat of Christ. How did we do good enough to reign over cities? So that's your, two, that's your two options. What I believe is your two options is they are judged right before the millennium or they are judged at the great white throne after the millennium. The, you, you also have people that say that the judgment seat of Christ is at the end of the tribulation and that the church age saints are judged with the tribulation saints at the judgment seat of Christ. And I don't personally believe that, but, you know, as I said... A lot of this is speculation. I don't believe any of these guys know it for certain, even though they seem to be pretty certain on it. But that's my take on this question.